Hello and welcome to Afternoon Chats brought to you by the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America or AFA. My name is Zulima Chavez and I'm the Support Center Manager for AFA. I'll be your host. The information presented in this chat is educational and not intended to provide individual medical advice. Please talk with your healthcare provider for advice about your personal health. Today's episode is produced independently by AFA and made possible by support from Amgen. So we thank them for sponsoring today's conversation. Today, we're talking about Asthma Peak Month with Dr. Nita Ogden, who is a medical spokesperson for AFA, a member of our Medical Scientific Council, and the director of the Allergy, Asthma, and Sinus Center in Edison, New Jersey. Dr. Ogden is a board-certified allergist and immunology specialist. Welcome and thank you for joining us on today's episode, Dr. Ogden. For our listeners, tell us a little bit more about yourself and about some of the work that you're doing. Well, thank you so much for having me. Hi, I'm Dr. Nita Ogden. I'm a board-certified allergist and asthma specialist practicing in New Jersey. My work right now is very much focused on patient care in a time of intense seasonal allergies, especially as we face climate change and a warming planet. Um, and I'm also focused on continually educating my patients, the public, and other primary care providers on optimal management of allergies and asthma. On our last episode, we spoke about September Asthma Peak. And as a recap, September is a critical month for people with asthma. Many people may notice that their asthma gets worse in September, and this is called Asthma Peak Month. During this month, asthma attacks, hospital stays, and deaths tend to be the highest. Today, we're continuing that conversation and diving deeper. Dr. Ogden, what are some steps that people with asthma can take during Asthma Peak to protect their lung health? There are a lot of steps that people can take to protect their lung health. I'd say one of the first things you should do is book an appointment with your healthcare provider before the season hits, especially if you're well aware that September can be a time of exacerbations for you. So you're going to see your physician. And in that appointment, you really want to make sure that you're up to date with your medications, uh, that they're not expired, that you have everything on hand. And key to all of this is an asthma action plan, which you should review with your healthcare provider how to use it, uh, exactly which medications are required when, and really go through it even more than once so that, again, you have a very good understanding of when to use your asthma medications because you're not necessarily taking the same medications every day. It really can sometimes vary depending on your symptoms. The other things you want to do is get vaccinated, uh, especially in the fall with the return to outed indoor environments like school we are going to require protection with the flu vaccine, which is an annual vaccine, and the COVID vaccine, which is the same, now coming out every year. If you're a candidate and you want to talk to your doctor about the RSV vaccine, this can apply to babies and also people who are pregnant, people who are the age of 60, or may have other medical comorbidities that put them at risk for that virus. As well, there's the pneumococcal vaccine that can protect you from certain pneumonias. Have these discussions with your, your health care provider to see if you qualify for those vaccines because they can protect your lung health. And other things that you can just sort of do in the world and at home, wearing a mask, uh, being kind of religious about washing your hands, uh, and the mask, of course, in indoor crowded spaces especially. And then at home, having an air purifier at your bedside or even in your home environment at large, uh, as well as uh, maintaining your HVAC system during the height of the season in September so that you have proper filtration from ambient and outdoor allergens. Thank you for sharing those tips. You mentioned schools and children are returning to school and they are a group that is affected by asthma peak. About 25% of asthma-related hospital stays for children happen in September. What are some key takeaways that parents of children with asthma should know, as well as the number one step that they should take this fall? I think this really goes back to the asthma action plan again. I can't kind of reiterate this enough because it helps people understand 
the use of medications, when and why. So reviewing that asthma action plan, not just with your child's healthcare provider, but with everyone who's involved with your child. So that could be other caregivers. That also very much means the school, a school nurse and a teacher. Because a lot of symptoms can begin, for example, when they're outside at recess. And it's really about capturing treatment when those symptoms begin before they start spiraling and cascading and get harder to control. So you never really want to sit on those symptoms. Being proactive um, really stems from having a very solid understanding of the asthma action plan that you want to review. Like I said, starting with that that preseason appointment with your healthcare provider and then going over with, again, and also your child as well so that they can be proactive, go to their teacher or depending on how old they are, maybe even take their own medication when it's necessary. For all of our listeners, we encourage you, if you have not done so, take some time to reach out to your healthcare provider, get an appointment and have these conversations. It's never too late. And it's really important to feel confident in your asthma care and management. Adults are also affected by the asthma peak. What recommendations do you have for adults with asthma to protect themselves? Um, I think this really goes back to the first question. Uh, So there are a lot of things that adults can do about getting vaccinated, staying masked, um, having sort of environmental controls at home. But again, I'll reiterate knowing the asthma action plan and also being uh, very proactive about keeping your medications with you. So an adult may be more likely to be traveling, for example, during the season to different areas. You never want to forget those things at home because, again, that's your first barrier against uh, having an exacerbation or if an exacerbation starts. So I'd really say look in your medicine cabinet and if needed, have, if you can, more than one of, for example, a rescue inhaler or something that you need, one that stays at home, that one that might go with you uh, wherever you may be, just so you're never short of what, what you're required for your asthma needs. Yeah. Working with a healthcare provider to make a plan is very important. And I love that you mentioned the asthma action plan earlier. Um, This is one tool that we love to share here at AFA. And as you mentioned, it includes information about medicines, recognizing when your symptoms get worse and what to do in an emergency. Dr. Ogden, why is it important to have an asthma action plan and uh, where can patients get one? You can get an asthma action plan actually on the AFA website. Um, And if you do an internet search, it's readily available. But honestly, you should really go to your healthcare provider and um, get one from them because it will be individualized to you and what your needs are. So those are just some starting places. But one of the best places to get it and review it is with your doctor or other healthcare provider. You also mentioned uh, as a medicines earlier. So speaking of those, um, there are a lot of treatments nowadays to treat asthma. And it is understood that asthma is not a one size fits all disease. How do people know if their current asthma treatment is working and what questions should they ask their doctor if their symptoms are not well controlled? That's a really great question. And, you know, doctors actually have another standardized tool called the um, asthma control test that they will often use, especially in these seasons, to uh, sort of get a sense of how well controlled a patient's asthma symptoms are. What they're looking for is what kind of symptoms, what kind of breakthrough symptoms are you having um, on a weekly basis or in the past months? We're looking at things like shortness of breath. How often have you needed your rescue inhaler? These kinds of questions are going to guide your healthcare provider uh, to see how well your asthma is controlled. And then in the office, they take more clinical parameters such as pulmonary function testing or um, peak flows uh, to get a better understanding of where your asthma is at that time. We've heard from many people that the high costs of their medicines are the main reason why they don't take their asthma medicines, but there are options. Can you talk about what people should do when they can't afford their asthma medicines? Yeah, I think this is such an important question that people still struggle with. And unfortunately, there's quite a burden still on the patient to investigate how to afford their asthma medicines, but there are certain avenues. Uh, People should 
definitely speak with their doctor's office. Also talk with their pharmacist. Calling the number on the back of your insurance card for the pharmacy number there, they can also offer sometimes some suggestions about what is the inhaler that's actually covered, if at all. Um, And then there's also new $35 price caps on many inhalers for people on commercial insurance or no insurance. So there are avenues and it just takes sometimes a little bit of work for people to investigate how they might be able to better afford their asthma medicine. Yeah, this process can definitely feel overwhelming for the patient, but there's a lot of really great resources out there for eligible individuals. And I'll also add There are patient assistance programs that are available for higher priced drugs, including biologic treatments and asthma inhalers. Uh, These are available for commercial insurance. Unfortunately, they're not available for Medicare or Medicaid patients. But if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our support center and we can provide you with more information about different options that may be available to you. Um, And in addition to the barriers to getting medicines, there are other factors that can make it harder to manage asthma. Many of these are influenced by where you live. AFA has released its 2024 Asthma Capitals Report during the Asthma Peak to help raise awareness about the nationwide impacts of this condition. The report analyzes data from across the United States and ranks the 100 largest cities where it is challenging to live with asthma. Dr. Ogden, you're a spokesperson for this research. Can you tell us more about this report and share with us which cities are the top three asthma capitals for 2024? Yes, certainly. Well, you know, the Asthma Capitals Report ranks cities by three outcomes, asthma rates, ER visits, and asthma-related deaths. And these are influenced by different factors, including poverty, air pollution, health insurance status, pollen counts, and more. Uh, AFA analyzed data from the 100 most populated cities in the contiguous United States, and this year's top three capitals are number three, Detroit, Michigan, number two, Rochester, New York, and number one, Allentown, Pennsylvania. So Allentown ranked as number one because it has a higher than average asthma rate and at emergency department visits, and this is its second year in a row as the top asthma capital. One thing to keep in mind about these rankings is that Even if your city is not necessarily or town is not on this list, does not mean that you're not at risk for these kinds of symptoms. Um, These these lists are really looking at certain parameters and uh, certainly many, many towns and cities in the United States um, are affected by the same things, but on different levels that can affect your asthma. Yes, absolutely. Nationally, asthma leads to about a million emergency department visits each year, and tragically, asthma can be fatal. With the growing impacts on climate change on health, we need policymakers in the asthma capitals to take action now. The full list of rankings and more information about the data is available on our website at asthmacapitals.com. We appreciate your help, Dr. Ogden, in explaining how asthma affects millions of people and the steps we can take to protect our lung health this Asthma Peak Month. Thank you for joining us and for your time. Thank you so much for having me. If you have questions about asthma or just need someone to talk to, our Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America online community is always open. You can find it at aaflikefrankaorg slash join. Before we say goodbye, we'd like to thank Amgen again for their kind sponsorship. Have a good afternoon, everyone.